Okay, so in order to find this, I'd like you to go to the hybrid model subfolder. Example model, hybrid model. And now, I'd like you to go to basic health economics. Do you see that? I'd like you to go download that model. This, these have unclear names. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure of the designation, but I don't think you want the refected one. <laughs> I think it was supposed to be refactored, but yeah. I, is that like reinfected? Yeah. Okay. So see if you can download the 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 normal one. Basic health economics, any logic, ABM, any logic seven. No, the 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 the, the, shortest, the, the shortest one. Yeah. Okay. Which one was it? Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So are you ready to open it? Do you need me to show the model more? Like on the screen, like show the, it's okay. So if you're ready to open it, let's open it up. Now, I ran a boot camp in Melbourne in November 2015, centered around health economics. <laughs> I think it's fair to say we had a strong representation of people in the room interested in health economics, right? And we ended up creating a bigger model than this one within that boot camp, which I believe is also here. But I thought we would start, and, and I'm glad to, to show that if people are interested. But I thought that, um, uh, that we would first take a look at this one which is more simple and more um, more designed for teaching so this model has many familiar pe uh, pieces to it I mean it's compared to what you folks have done it it's it's much less sophisticated so here we have an individual progressing among dysglycemic states um, to an end-stage renal disease state um, a transplant and we have risk of death for many of these states okay more than that, we have associated with each individual another aspect of their state, which concerns while they're in a given state, their quality of life, a health-related quality of life indicator, perhaps you listed in some utility scale, and a certain number of costs per, a certain dollar cost per year for being in that state, right? So someone could be in a diabetic state, and there's a certain amount of cost per year for being in that state. Someone could be in an end-stage renal disease state before transplant, and there's costs associated with hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis or what have you, right? So we have cost per year or quality of life. And I'd note that if you go and you look at some of these states, like let's take the normal glycemic state there. Here we have quality of life designated as one and cost per year of zero. Type two diabetes, by contrast, we have a quality of life of 0.8 and cost per year of 2000. End stage renal disease, cost uh, quality of life of 0.65 and cost per year of 50,000. Okay. Um, transplant, lower cost per year. That's probably underballing it, for, but the quality of life is higher than forensic renal disease by a significant amount. Does it factor in a one-off cost for the transplant? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. Well, I might as well get to it now. That's, that's fine. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there's costs associated with state 
But in activity-based costing, there's also costs associated with particular events or occurrences. And here you'll notice that there's a cost associated with this transition here to a transplanted state whereby we accumulate extra costs. Now, we're going to go see what it is we're accumulating, but fundamentally we're, we're accumulating costs that are not state-based but that are event-based, right? Um, and there might be a cost associated with graph failure, although that's not represented. Beyond this, here, um, we can go up to Maine, or rather we can go down Maine. And here, what you'll find is that there's a set of information being accumulated at the level of the entire population. And this information consists of health economic quantities in the terms of life years lived, quality adjusted life years lived. So these are years of life where each year it takes into account that someone has, has non-unity, often non-unity uh, health related quality of life. So the idea is, you know, we want to not only, as the WHO put it, add years to life, but add life to years. So we want to have people, policies that encourage higher quality of life while people are alive. And, and qualities is a way of trying to value, you know, is a step towards trying to value that in terms of, of outcomes. Beyond that, we also have costs. And we have accumulated undiscounted costs, costs where discounting is not applied and uh, cases where it is applied discounting is applied according to some discount rate. Are we okay with that? M more than that, we have, you know, graphs showing, showing these things. Okay. Um, now, you'll notice, mark these names, like accumulated undiscounted costs, accumulated discounted costs. As the first link to them, I would note that when someone gets a transplant, we actually go and what are we doing here? Does anyone recognize this? What are we doing? What's going on there? Yeah, we're adding $75,000 to what? To the stock. This stock is, is having that amount added to it. I mean, there's a comparable discounted amount that's being added to this other stock down here. Mm -hmm. So there, that one action or that one activity, that one event, the occurrence of a transplant is yielding an increase at conceptually an instantaneous level to these costs because it's, you know, it's a cost associated right around the time of the event. It's the transplant and pre-op and post-op and Potentially, if it's a live donor, you know, some costs associated with the extraction of the, the donor kidney, et cetera. Um, more than that, though, these things are accumulating other costs as well. Where do you think the other costs might be calculated? Where in your learning? Man, imagine if my boot camp had a final exam. Um, probably no one would come anymore, um, <laughs> except my students. Um, um, that's right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, where would I, where might I accumulate ongoing costs, like costs per year? Through the health states. If I had costs per year, how would they relate to these accumulated costs? Well, okay, if I have a stock, yeah, it's a flow. It's a flow into a stock. Cost per year. If we have a stock of dollars, the flow into it, if our time unit is years, the flow into it is dollars per year. Hmm? So those costs are going to come into this, this flow here, this undiscounted flow. And then there's going to be some costs associated with interventions we're going to come to in just a minute. But these costs associated with this flow, how are we going to calculate it? How are we going to calculate all oh, these people, the, 
population. Some of them are $2,000 cost per month. Others have, or you know, per year. Others have 10000 Others have, you know, uh, $50,000 per year. Others, $0 per year. How are we going to... How are we going to get the value of this flow? Sorry? Well, okay, we have to collect that data from lots of people. Where is this construct in any logic where we can total things up or average things out or take the maximum over the entire population? Indeed, indeed. And wherein do the statistics live? Population. Population. Let's go to the population. Let us now turn our gaze to the population. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the population here. And let's look down at statistics area. Here, it's easier to think about initially for costs. Here are the new costs per year. And what are these doing? Speak to me here of the mechanism. What is this doing? Yeah, it's adding up, it's summing up the cost per year across the whole population. What are? Yeah. These are these costs per year. Where do those costs per year live? To what does item refer? In person. Right? Cost per year. Where did we, where did that come from? Where did the value, wherein did the value for this get assigned? State yeah, in the state. Remember we assigned cost per year? Ah, the pieces are falling into place. Okay. Population, ladies and gentlemen. Cost per year. We're totaling up these costs per year across everyone. This person, $2,000 per year. This person, $1,000 per year. This person, $0 per year. Summing up across those, we get a total number of dollars per year, right? And that becomes a what? That goes to this flow. So take a look at this flow. What are we doing here? What is going on? Oops. What, <laughs> what is... What is going on there? Yeah, what is this new cost per year? This is a, begins with an S. It's a statistic. It's the statistic we were just looking at. Hmm? True or not? True. Okay. Okay. So we have cost per year. Now, we do a similar thing for quality of life, it turns out, to get, so ladies and gentlemen, imagine we had a thousand people in our population and they lived for one year. How many life years have we accumulated? A thousand, a thousand over one year. But suppose they each had a quality of life of 0.9. 900 quality, quality adjusted life years lived. So it turns out, so imagine if we had those thousand people over 10 years, how many, how many life years would we have accumulated? Sorry, if, if, if yeah, we're just considering life years, don't worry about quality adjusted yet. So a thousand people over 10 years, 10,000. 10,000 life years lived, ladies and gentlemen. In short, to get life years, we're just summing up. It's just the integral of the, the new life years. And it's the integral of what? It's the integral of the population size. If we have 1,000 people over 10 years, or we have 20,000 people, excuse me, 1,000 people over 10 years, or we have you know, 500 people over 20 years, or we have 2,000 people over five years, we all get 10,000 life years. True or not? True. Um, but you have to remove that. If they 
as soon as they die, they're no longer in the population size. Gone. Right? Mm. Um, so, so, ladies and gentlemen, here we're just, we're just integrating up the size of the population. That's all there is. Hmm? Okay. When people die, they leave. Dead and gone, as they say. So, um, so, so here, for quality adjusted life years, we're doing the same thing. We're accumulating quality of life across the entire population. We're summing up the quality of life. Instead of, instead of it being one for every person, summing it up across the population, we're subbing up 0.9 and 0.7 for this other person and 0.6 for this other and 1.0 for this other. We're just subbing up and we're, we're accumulating that for quality adjusted life years. So this is a sum of quality, uh, quality adjusted, of, of qualities, of quality of life across the population. You could think of this guy as a sum of one across everyone in the population. This guy is a sum where every person contributes their quality of life. And we get quality adjusted life years. Hmm? Quality, uh, quality adjusted life years. So it's one year, for each person, it's one year times their quality of life, hence summing up quality of life and integrating. So that's qualities and, and life years. Okay, great. Um, and now, for costs, we have disc undiscounted, and then we have discounting of costs. Hmm? Hmm. So here we have a discount rate, and that leads to a discount factor. Maybe it's 0.2, and over time it declines to 0.1, and declines to 0.05. That's going down with the discount rate. And I assume here, continuous discounting. So it's x of minus the discount rate times the time. OK. So yeah. instead of summing, why aren't we looking at the average quality of life? Because if we have more population, we get higher quality of life. Correct. That's how qualities are defined. It's quality adjusted life here. So if you have a bigger population, you have a larger, a faster accumulation of quality adjusted life years. That's just how they're defined. So it's one is life years, quality adjusted life years. So as time goes on, and with a bigger population, life years will be rising. Um, as, as time goes on, it'll continue to rise. With a bigger population, it will be larger. Life years lived by the population. And quality adjusted life years is just like that, but in, in the sense that it's, if you have a population that's 10 times larger with the same quality of life profile, the, the accumulation will be 10 times larger. That's how it's defined in health economics. Yeah, it's, it's quality adjusted life years, and that's across the population. You could imagine an average quality of life. That would be another metric you know, associated, associated with it. it it's, it's an interesting thing, and it actually with dynamic modeling, th there are some very interesting things once you're dealing with non-closed populations. <laughs> I, I can see Jeff contemplating them, and indeed in my youth I contemplated them with a certain degree of dismay. Um, so if you have a model of an open population and you have, a you have a policy which encourages higher fertility. You're going to get a larger quality of life, you know, qualities accumulated, and life years accumulated, um, which, you know, it's, it's not clear it's been a population, it's been a contribution to the good of society it's comparable to preventing people from dying of similar numbers. Um, or to put it another way, suppose you know, if, if you, it, it's basically valuing, okay, preventing people from dying similar to having new people born. And so a perverse way of helping improve our, our life years is, is to sponsor large numbers of births. And wow, aren't we doing, doing great? Especially because the kids then have high quality of life because they are, they're less afflicted, you know, earlier in life, right? Um, anyway, but I, I'm not trying to pick a fight with healthy economists. It's just, I, I, probably they've thought 
they they forgot more about this than I ever knew. So so they probably have lots of ways of dealing with this. I, I don't know about, but I'm I'm just confused. Um, I'm just a confused computer geek. <laughs> That's all. You know, it just it struck me as a bit curious. Um, um, but so do lots of things. So um, anyway, so um, anyway, these are these are some indicators. Let's look a little bit further at this. So. There's a couple of things going on here, even with this small model, much less the other model, which I can give you. I should really, if it's not, I should really check, confirm whether it's featured on here. If it's not, I'll put it there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, in addition to this, we have costs associated with interventions, okay? And these interventions, um, basically we've got Costs associated with two types of interventions. We have screening costs per year, and we have lifestyle change costs per year. Okay, so these these intervention related factors are going to be imposing costs as well. And you can see there's like costs per pre-diabetic lifestyle intervention um, costs. So if we're intervening on people. Um, we will um, will bear a cost associated with that, which will factor into these costs. Now, if we go and we look at at how these are calculated, we have a cost per one times the count of of, of pre diabetics in the population. Um, and similarly, here we have a uh, um, uh, some some intervention screening costs. That are that are um, born for people who don't don't already have have prediabetes. Okay, um, and I can't actually remember. Um, so, so here I think the idea was we're um, we're trying to uh, capture some effects of uh, of interventions, right? Um, and there's and then we have a hazard rate like prediabetes prevention hazard rate. Um, uh, in order to prevent people from going on um, from a, a pre-diabetes status uh, on. And I, I don't even think that I fully, yeah, here it is, okay. So here we, um, we can end up adjusting that to examine the effects if we had a program to, to help encourage those who are pre-diabetic become normal glycemic, we could have a program that would, would move people back. So the idea was basically to show a way of accumulating costs associated with intervention, okay? Um, and, uh, and that might be associated, so there's an aggressive intervention here um, where I impose a, uh, a prediabetes prevention hazard um, of 0.25, so I, on a, on a per year uh, basis, there's a hazard of well, this hazard of 0.25 um, returning from prediabetes. Um, so approximately speaking, uh, about 25%. bit less of individuals who are prediabetic will go back to the diabetic, oh, sorry, to the um, normal glycemic state every year with this intervention. And I'm examining how that will end up affecting things. Also take into account the screening costs and the um, lifestyle intervention costs um, associated with this. And basically, in this analysis, you'll notice there's this little X and a tick there. And that tick indicates that it's a parameter variation experiment. So this parameter variation experiment is designed to examine the incremental cost effectiveness of one intervention compared to the baseline. The way it's accomplished is a little bit gauche, but it works, um, and specifically, um, the way in which we do this is we have a parameter variation experiment that runs for two iterations. The first is the baseline. For the baseline, the prevention hazard is zero. We have no cost per year for others. And then when the intervention is in place, we have these costs being borne and this prevention hazard being implied. So the way in which we're doing this is we're running it twice. 
The first is with an index of zero. That's the baseline. The other is with an index of one. And these little expressions basically ensure that for the um, for the non what well, for the non baseline for the intervention case, we have the appropriate value supplied. Otherwise, it's zero for the for those cases. And what we do is here's the place where it gets harvested. Um, and I think we have replica, uh, no, no replication being used. So here we are reading out from that main to the life years for scenarios and qualities for scenarios. We're reading out the costs associated with this. And then when we're done, we perform the cost effectiveness calculation, the incremental cost effectiveness calculation, looking at costs for the baseline versus costs for the intervention. Um, and uh, qualities live for the baseline versus for the intervention in performing the appropriate um, uh, performing the appropriate division there. So preferred cost effectiveness calculation is done here, and and here I am. Come on, um, I am getting the discounted and undiscounted costs, and I am assigning it to two appropriate variables here. So if we were to run this thing, oh no, okay, here we go. If we were to run this, this is, a, we run it for I think 150 years here. And here we go. So we're running it out. We're running it out on these, both of these in parallel. We just finished and here we go. Here are the discounted costs per year. Here's the undiscounted costs per year. Um, per quality rather, and this is per life year lived versus not life year lived. Okay, that was performed by this after it read out the life years lived from the two scenarios, the qualities from the two scenarios, the accumulated discounted costs from the two scenarios, and undiscounted costs. So you'll notice that it ran those in parallel. After all, they're just two elements of a parameter variation, and just like we saw yesterday, it could run those in parallel because we saw the day before. So it's running those in parallel here, right? There they go, running on two my cores. And it's, it's putting them there and, and storing them away. So that's, uh, in this other model that I have, we have actually an incremental cost effectiveness plane, and we're running this many times over for different replications and getting values and plotting them in the plane and et cetera. And, and I'll try to make sure that that's available to you. If it's not on the website now, I'll put it there. Okay, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, a simple, a simple model with some health economic quantities associated with it. Big picture, it's not a big change from what we're doing in terms of the basic mechanics, but we need, we need some way of keeping track of activity-based costing for an individual, typically. We need quality of life indicators for an individual. We need at the level of main to be able to keep track of accumulated costs, discounted and undiscounted, and qualities and life years. And we need a way of, of relating that to the individual level phenomena, which we do through statistics and for certain types of events by directly incrementing these costs there. And then, through artful use of a parameter variation experiment, we could perform an appropriate calculation that will calculate incremental cost effectiveness ratios. Okay? More sophisticated scenario for the latter. Take into account many realizations uh, will be uh, will be available for you uh, shortly, and if there's questions about it, I can answer them this afternoon. Okay? Is the, is the food there? Very good. So ladies and gentlemen, lunch is served. I'm gonna recuse myself so I can consider the afternoon session, but I'll be back with you in, how long? Half an hour. Half an hour, very good, thank you.